it like no other. Reach Let's just go ahead and worship the King of Kings. Let's say a word of thank you to him. Let us worship him. Father, we thank you. Is there anything you can remember in the course of this last year for which you want to thank God? Just bear that in mind. Is there any significant thing that happened that you can trace to God in the course of the past year? Say thank you, Jesus Christ. Let us just say thank you, Jesus Christ. Let's worship the Lord. Let's worship the King of Kings. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your kindness. We thank you for your blessings, O oh Lord. We worship you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. You are indeed the Alpha and the Omega. You are the one that saw us through year 2021. And you brought us to year 2022. We thank you for your grace upon us. We thank you for your kindness upon us. We thank you for looking after us. We thank you for ensuring that the Lord, that you have been with us all through in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you because you have kept us. Thank you because you have kept us in our body and in our spirit. Thank you for everything that you have taken us through. Thank you for where you have brought us to. Thank you for not allowing sickness to overcome us. Thank you for not allowing evil to overcome us. Thank you for not allowing any satanic agenda to Thank you for and thank you for lifting us over every trouble, every problem, every hurdle that came our way. Father, thank you for looking after our children. Thank you for keeping them. Thank you for looking out, looking out, looking after each and every one of us. Thank you for keeping us together. Thank you for this family of God. Thank you for everybody, Lord. Thank you for the testimonies that we have had. Thank you for the things that we have seen. Thank you for your grace upon us. Thank you for your mercy, oh Lord. It is by your mercy that we are not consumed. Your name has been a strong tower for us. We have re regularly, again and again, run into it and uh, we have been saved. Father, thank you for keeping us, oh Lord. Thank you for your, thank you for bringing us into this place, oh Lord. Thank you for the testimonies of year 2021. We owe everything to you, Lord. Father, we bless you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus name we have given thanks Amen. in jesus name we have given thanks Amen. brethren i just want you to cast your mind back to this past year is there any particular thing that you can actually say but for god this would not have happened i remember in year 2019 and whenever i remember that time I shake when we went to Nigeria to to attend interview for a green card visa. <laughs> when we got there, there were certain documents that we were supposed to bring, but somehow we did not bring them. They were not with us. We had the documents, and we were supposed to have made copies of those documents. First, let me give you a bit of background. As at the time that my family left the U.S. here, we were already out of status. The visa had expired. Meaning that if you go, you go forever. So, there, and we left like we were coming back. Now, the implication is that if that visa, if that interview did not go well, there was nowhere to come back to. We would have had to say, ah, please, go into my house, go under the bed, help me take this document or what have you, because we only packed just to travel. So, the implications were very serious. And we got to the embassy, and there were things that were probably not going on well. But somehow, God showed up for us. Amen. When I was speaking with the person that was interviewing, and the person was asking, what about this? I said, ah, we have it. He said, it's not here. Where is the copy? 
we didn't have it so as i was responding to that person somebody just showed up behind that person who looked at me and saw my face and said eh? pastor Nee, this person I had not seen her for more than 10 years she wasn't the visa officer she was just passing by behind the person that was interviewing me she just heard my voice and lifted up her face and saw me and the way she saw me and mentioned my name and i responded and she couldn't even shout it because people were watching the person that was interviewing us said that it seems that you guys know yourselves very well therefore you are supposed to bring this don't worry i'll make a photocopy of it by myself you were supposed to bring this you don't have it but i wave it you were supposed to do this it's not there we wave it we do every all of those meanwhile we saw people before us they were denied because they did not have those same things but god showed up for us whenever i remember those circumstances how do i explain to these children that you cannot go back to the u.s again then where will I put them? What will happen? It will cause a great dislocation. I owe it to God and to God only. Is there anything that you have remembered, that you can remember, that it could only have been God, that showed up for you at that point in time? I want you to, let us just say thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us ascribe it to him. Let us thank him. Is there anything that you remember that it is only God that did it? It could only have been God. It could only have been God. Father, we look back and say thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. We have reasons to say thank you. We have many reasons to take, say thank you. Things that money cannot buy. Things that money cannot buy. Things that our intellect could not have given us. Things that our own means could not have given us. Things that our parents could not have done for us. Things that our friends, our network could not have done for us. That you have done for us, Father, we say thank you, Lord. We are grateful. We are grateful, Lord. We owe many things to you. We owe everything to you as a matter of fact. Our peace, our peace of mind we owe to you. I know many of my colleagues, several of my colleagues in the past year who have had to leave the job because of their mental health. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, because you kept me. There are many people that their intellect is no longer enough to do the job. Father, thank you because you gave me my own. Thank you because you sustained me. Thank you because you kept me. Thank you because you helped me, Lord. If you had not helped me, I would not have been here. There are so many people that we forget. We forget where we are coming from. But thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, because you, you are the one that sustained us. After all these years that we are in life, Life that we are living, that we are in good health, Father, we bless your holy name, O Lord. We are grateful, Lord. Thank you. You have been our God in ages past. You have been our help in ages past. Father, thank you because you are still there for us. We are grateful, Lord. Thank you because we can say, come to you again to ask for several things. When we know that with the assurance that we have in you, we know that you tomorrow will be better. We know that tomorrow will be a good day. We know that tomorrow will be wonderful. Father, we bless your holy name, O Lord. We say thank you. There is nothing that we have that we are giving to you that is commensurate with the blessing that you have given us, with the things that you have done in our lives. Lord, we bless you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Amen. Is there anybody that is thankful? I said, in Jesus' name, we have given thanks. Amen. There are a couple of prayers. Brother Femi, did you get that WhatsApp that I sent to you? If you can project it. Let us just pray a number of prayers, and then we will just share a few words. There is just one or two things that I will just want to show us as we go into this new year that the lord will use to help us as we go into this journey and at the end of this journey at the end of the journey of this year we will have cause to say thank you lord jesus christ in jesus name we have prayed Amen. now i want everybody to stand up you young people you should learn to stand up and pray in church this is how we learned it when we we're growing up you have to be upstanding when they are showing prayers, you need to learn how to pray. 
Because it will be a misnomer. If you come out of here and you get to somewhere you need to pray and you are not able to pray. Having been brought up in the house of prayers. But I find me, are we did you have it? Okay. So please let's teach them to constantly engage. When you are in the presence of God, this is not just any other place. When you get home, you can relax and sleep and sit down and use your phone and do whatever you want. But when you are in the sanctuary, please, young people, please hear me. When you are in the sanctuary, it is the time for you to engage with God. It's not just any other place. Most of you heard, I said it is Mount Zion. It is a place where you meet with God. When you meet with God, you comport yourself. You arrange yourself. I pray that the Lord God will give every one of us understanding the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So I want us to make certain declarations concerning year 2022. It is simple and straightforward. I want you to lift up your hand and begin to make this declaration after me. Year 2022. Twenty twenty two, I will produce much fruit, and my fruit will abide. I will produce abundance, I will be enlarged. He shall be well with me all year round. Put power on those words, put power on those words, spin it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Declare that thou mayest be justified. Declare that thou mayest be justified. I speak to the womb of this year 2022. In this year 2022, I will produce much fruit. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. I will produce much fruit in the name of Jesus Christ. And my fruit will abide. My fruit will abide. My fruit will abide. I will produce abundance in the name of Jesus Christ. I will be enlarged in the name of Jesus Christ. He shall be well with me all year round 2022. He shall be well with me. My fruit will abide. If somebody pray, I want you to open your mouth and declare it in prayer. My fruit will abide. I will produce fruit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. Let me tell you something about bearing fruit. The person that does not bear fruit is the only one in the Bible, really. I mean, one, one of the very few in the Bible that Jesus actually walked against. Remember the parable of the talents. Every one of them produced fruit except the one that came back and said, the person did not lose. The issue was just that he did not produce fruit. Remember, Jesus was a gentle Jesus. He loved everybody. He took care of everybody. He was merciful to everybody. He came with all the mercies of heaven. The only issue he had with anybody was the one that was not producing fruit. He came to the fig tree. And there was no fruit on it. Can you imagine Jesus expressing such anger? A whole Jesus, full of mercy. He did not even allow any explanation. That one, the tree was telling him, well, it is not yet time for us to bear fruit. But Jesus did not have any, did not, he could not brook any explanation. He said, no man shall hit of you anymore. Fruit, bearing fruit, is a major thing. When God created man, the first thing he said was that, be fruitful. I pray that you will not abuse the purpose of creation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is so that you will bear fruit. So let us pray that prayer again. I will produce much fruit in year 2022. And my fruit will abide. Just go ahead and pray it. Just declare it. It's just a declaration. Even if it doesn't happen, it doesn't cost you anything. Just declare it. I will produce much fruit in year 2022. And my fruit will abide. I will produce abundance in the in this year 2022 in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will be enlarged in this year 2022 in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Where I am right now will not be where I will be at the end of this year. I would have moved far. I would have been, I would have borne much fruit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So shall it be. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And I pray concerning each and every one of you, you will bear fruit in the name of Jesus. When the year comes to an end and they ask, what have you brought? You will have a lot to show in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will have a lot to show in the name of Jesus Christ. Your fruit will abide in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will have testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ. You will also have testimonials in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will have something to point to in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I can't hear your amen. Does that can anything good come out of Nazareth? And the answer was this, come and see. You will have something to tell people to come and see. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now let us pray. Lift up your right and declare. In this year 2022, I receive divine direction. On a daily basis, I will not miss my way. I will not commit errors. I will not be confused. I am divinely guided and directed. Go ahead and say it in prayer. Declare it. Open your mouth and say it out. We've written it out so that you can be able to declare it in prayer. Begin to declare it. Pray it out. In this year, 2022, my direction is from one eye. I receive divine direction on a daily basis. On a daily basis, I receive divine direction. I will not miss my way. I will not miss my way. I will not go the wrong way. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will not commit errors. I will not be confused. In the name of Jesus Christ. I am divinely guided. I am divinely directed. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So shall it be. For we pray. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. 
And this is for you to understand this. Let me just explain it a bit. No matter, speed is good. Energy is good. Power is good. But if it is not a portion in the right direction, it is counterproductive. If you are supposed to be traveling to the north, and rather than the north, you mistakenly face the south. No matter how fast you are, no matter how sharp your vehicle is, no matter how powerful the engine is, every movement you are making is counterproductive to where you are supposed to go. And that is why divine direction is more important than anything else. I pray that you will not miss your way in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not go the wrong direction in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not go a different route from where you should go in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now pray with me say in this year 2022. Oh, I can't hear you in this year 2022. My increase will not pass me by. My promotion will not pass me by. My enlargement will not pass me by. I decree and declare this year will produce for me. I'm multiplied this year. I'm blessed this year. Is there anybody that wants those prayers? Begin to begin to declare it. If you want that as testimony at the end of the year, begin to declare it. My promotion will not pass me by. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare this year will produce for me. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm multiplied this year. I'm multiplied this year. I'm multiplied this year. There is something called blessing. I'm blessed this year. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the morning, in the noon time, in the evening, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Everyone connected to me is blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone that blesses me is blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone linked to me is blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever I lay my hands upon this year is blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ. My testimony shall be that of blessing. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's go to the next slide. They are going to declare, Oh, year 2022, open doors for me. Favor me. Do me good. Every good seed I have sown in the last five years, I receive the others this year. My days of greatness, Begin in the name of Jesus. Promotion is coming for me. Lifting is coming for me. Go ahead and declare it. Go ahead and declare it. Go ahead and declare it. Year 2022. Open doors for me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Open doors for me. Favor me. Do me good. Do me good. Every good seed that I've sown in the last five years and before, which has not shown so far, I declare I'm going to receive the harvest this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm going to receive full interest this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. My days of greatness, they are here. They begin this year in the name of Jesus Christ. Promotion is coming for me. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lifting is coming for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we have prayed. You know, we, we generally talk about breakthrough. Breakthrough. Breakthrough means that where that thing has been difficult, you apply some force so that it breaks and then you can go ahead. What about if the door is open and all you need to do is just to walk through? I want you to pray. I will walk through this year. I will not need to break anything. Doors will open for me of their own accord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Begin to declare. Doors will open for me of their own accord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will just walk through. I will make it easily. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you Lord Jesus. In Jesus name we have prayed. And this is the last set. I want you to pray. Declare with me. Every barrier and limitation. Every barrier and limitation to my greatness. I cast their roots. I plead the blood of Jesus against them. Every power of shame assigned against me. I command them to catch fire. Every power assigned against my destiny. 
Every power assigned against my career, every power assigned against my health, every power assigned against my family, let them catch fire and backfire. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I go ahead and pray. In the name of Jesus Christ, every barrier and limitation against me, every barrier and limitation to my greatness, I cast their roots in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ. I stand behind the blood of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every power of shame assigned against me, I command them to catch fire. Every power assigned against me, every power working against me, I command them to catch fire. Every power assigned against my destiny, I command them to catch fire. Every power assigned against my career, I command them to catch fire. Every power assigned against my career, I command them to catch fire. Every power assigned against my health, I command them to catch fire. Let it backfire concerning them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Now spread your hands towards me like you want to receive something. It's a new year, and prayers that we pray at about this time, they are very pivotal. And they will work for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I said they will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I pray concerning you, it shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. Every prayer that you have said today, you will receive the answers in the name of Jesus Christ. The answers will come following you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every prayer that has been said today, I put it in past tense as you are going to begin to see them in the name of Jesus Christ. You are going to begin to manifest them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I curse every root of infirmity in you in the name of Jesus Christ. Every root of sickness, I curse them in the name of Jesus Christ. As you go into this year, every root of illnesses, I cause them in the name of Jesus Christ. Let them begin to dry up in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let them begin to depart in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You have stretched forth your hands and I pray, the power that parted the Red Sea, let it rest upon these hands in the name of Jesus Christ. The power that raised, Je that, that raised Jesus from the dead, let it rest upon these hands in the name of Jesus Christ. The powers that raised Lazarus from death, even after four days, let it rest upon these hands in the name of Jesus. The power that raised Jairus' daughter, let it rest upon these hands in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall be well with you in the name of Jesus. From this time and spot, you have good news to tell. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Any problem that came into your life through any satanic machinations, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ against them. By virtue of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, I exterminate them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I hear from you, it shall be good news. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. This year, you have started this year well. It will end on a colorful note for you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It shall be well with you in the name of Jesus Christ. So shall it be. For we pray in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Please help me welcome somebody by your side. Just say congratulations. The year is going to be good. The way we have started this year is going to be wonderful. Go around and tell somebody this year is going to be good. I assure you. It's going to be good. It's going to work out well for you. Praise the Lord. Please let's have our seats. God bless you. We have just 15 minutes. Um, I'm wondering what would be the best thing to say. I have quite a number of things that I want to share, but which time will not permit us, but I will just pick one or two. Praise the Lord. During the crossover service, we were talking about the firstborn. And the blessings that comes within the firstborn. For those that were not here, 
In particular, we spoke about the fact that there are rights. The firstborn has his inheritance. Then secondly, we talk about there is the blessing that the firstborn has, among many other things. And there, are the, there is the prayer, there is a classical prayer for the, for the firstborn, the blessing that the father releases upon his children. In the Bible, Jacob released it upon his children. And you see it happening in the lives of those children thereafter. I pray for you. Every blessing that we have released upon you, you will walk in it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will begin to act in it in the name of Jesus Christ. It will begin to work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. These are not just uh, blessings, it is proclamation. That's why when they talk about decree, they say they proclaimed a decree. That means it has a power, a more powerful force of enforcement. These blessings will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall be a year loaded with blessings for you in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall be a year in which you will succeed in all things in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall be a year in which you will witness transformation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Why? Because you belong to the assembly of the firstborn. Now, because we don't have too much time, I just want to mention a couple of things. In order for you to walk in these blessings, to begin to happen to you, there are a couple of things that is required of a firstborn. I'll mention just three. One is followership. A firstborn or a son or a child must be able to follow the father. It's followership. It is required for you to be able to follow. That is how the firstborn does not make a mistake. If Reuben had followed the path of the father, the way things should be, he would not have made a mistake of, of losing the blessings that comes with being a firstborn. Because at the time that the father was going to bless them, he said, this is who you should be. Reuben should be the excellency of my strength. And then he described you should be the one that has strength in everything. But then he refused him those blessings. Why? He did not do what a child should do. Or he did contrary to a child, what a child should do. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 19, talks about followership. Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. And Jesus, walking by the sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon called Peter, and Andrew, and Andrew, his brother, casting the net into the sea, for they were fishers. And then verse 19, the Bible says, and he said unto them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus is calling you today for you to actually function in the office of firstborn, for you to actually really, really function and get the blessings of the, of a, of a, of the firstborn. You need to be able to follow Jesus. The, the Father only makes those who follow. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. The Bible says that be ye followers of me. Even as I also am of Christ. I pray that the Lord will give us the best understanding of these words in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The number two is total dependence and trust of the Father. Trust and total dependence. When God is going to call you, there are certain things that you will be asked to do. In this day and age, people ask questions. Where are we going there? But I can tell you, if you are going to be a real force, but you are going to trust your father fully, when he says, come, let us go, you follow. Abraham took his son. He said, we are going somewhere. We are going to sacrifice. No questions he followed. You must depend. 
depend on God. When God was going to call Abraham, he didn't even tell him exactly where he was going. But he just said, come with me. And he followed. You are going to have to trust. You are going to have to depend on the Lord God Almighty all the time. And you know, when the Bible says that you don't think you have figured, you can figure it out all by Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Let's see Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. I believe. Trust in the Lord with all thine height, with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Throughout the message translation, I like the way the message translation puts it. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Message. He said, listen for God's voice in everything you do, everywhere you go. He is the one who will keep you on track. Verse 5. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. Yes. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. And don't try to figure out everything on your own. Your knowledge is limited. You don't know anything as a matter of fact. Forget all that we are even talking about. You don't know anything. Because there are so many things that are going on in the spiritual. These days, people just, people just do things like, well, it doesn't matter because they think they know. It is the secular world. Let me explain something to us. There's a spiritual world, there's a secular world. The secular world is supposed to bring out God out of the things that you do normally. I mean, the essence, the importance of God, the power of God, the, the grace of God, that the secular world tries to bring it out so that you don't depend on God anymore. And that's why in the secular world, in the secular world that we have in the Western world, there's what is called the social protection floor. You know that come what it may. When you are in this world, you cannot be hungry. You are not likely to be hungry. You are not likely to be homeless under normal circumstances. That is, with the education that you have, with the knowledge that you have, with the skills that you already have, you can operate without really suffering. Our people in Africa back home, they know that there are certain things that can happen to them and there is no protection floor. They will go down and down. People can starve to death. They know. But when, you, when we're in the Western world here, the power of God is removed. So that's why the people down home, they depend more on God. They pray more. They hold vigils. They fast. They do everything. Their pastor tells them to do something. They do things. But here... There's a de-emphasis from the power and ability of that is the way the secular world wants us to live. So you see somebody when they were coming from Africa here, they probably prayed, they fasted before they got visa. They used to they, they approached many prophets. They did many things. And then that time they were very fervent in church, vigil, everything. They came to America little by little, then they realized, oh no, 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 life here is different. And then they de emphasize God in their life. That is plain into the secular world. Because they're like, what is the pastor? Today? They won't tell you, Pastor. That man is not even old as old as you are, you call him father. No, it is the office. They say, ah, no, we don't do like that. Any, we don't do like that here. Yeah. That thing that you do is in Africa. But that is what Satan actually wants to happen. And when you de emphasize God in your affairs, and you say, there is no need to go to church. Oh, let me just go when it is convenient. There is no need to do this. There is no need to do that. You are sowing a seed for the future. And that's why I've seen certain people who have reaped the fruits of secularity. Secularity, don't forget, de-emphasizing the importance of God. And then they begin to do things on their own. That's what the devil really wants. I've seen some people who, because they de-emphasize God, they no longer go to church, 
They don't teach their children about Christ anymore. In the course of time, they just find out that in their own house, their children are sleeping with themselves. That's the fruits of secularity. The son will just show up one day and say, you know what? I have to be very frank with you. I'm clear. Say, I have to come out. It is the fruit of secularity. Many things happen, but it will not be clear at the beginning. You will think you are okay. There are so many things in this life that is much more than the little that you can eat and you can survive with in life right now. I beg of you, depend on God. In year 2022, you have another opportunity to reset. Total trust on God. When you begin to trust God, begin to trust the word of God, begin to trust the word of your prophet, there is harvest that is coming. And that harvest will be good for you in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is also Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. Malachi chapter 1 verse 6. Bible says, isn't it true that a son honors his father and a worker his master? Can we do it KJV so that it can be direct and clear? A son honored his father. Honor God. Those are, I mean, that's one other major benefit. And one other major requirement of sonship. It was because Reuben did not honor his father that he lost the blessing that comes with the sonship. Not just that. The extra portion, the extra portion that should actually come to the firstborn, the father did not give him. Rather than that, he took Joseph from among his children. Joseph was number 11. He took Joseph and made him the firstborn and gave extra blessing to Joseph. Because he said, Joseph, don't worry. Your own is already set to the same. Your children, Ephraim and Manasseh, joined the 12 tribes of Israel. That was how they became, they became 12. I pray that the Lord will give us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. You need, number one, what have I called it? Followership, number two. And number three, honor. Honor. You need to honor your father. I pray that the Lord will give us understanding in the name of Jesus Christ. There are so many things that the sonship requires, but I just wanted to highlight this one. And I want to tell you a final one about faith. I actually have two and a half minutes left, but just want to tell you this story for you to just have an idea of what it is. Especially for those who are just coming. Let them take one special thing home today. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You remember the story when they were getting to when they needed to cross over to the promised land. You know the story. The children of Israel, Moses took 12 people, 12 spies. He said they should go and spy the land. By the time they, they, they were going to spy the land, in Numbers chapter 13, from verses 4 to 15, you don't need to read it, but Numbers chapter 13, verses 4 to 15, the Bible listed the names of the spies one by one. In Numbers chapter 13. And in verse 8 in particular, it talks about Joshua there. Numbers verse 8, he said, of the tribe of Ephraim, Oshia, the son of Nun. I was talking about Joshua. Please, I want us to understand this. Please, please pay attention to me. Give me an extra five minutes. I will explain. I'll be done. The Bible listed the names. So it must be for a purpose of all the 12 spies. It took one per tribe. In verse 8, they mentioned that of Oshia, the son of Nun. But however, in verse 16, verse 16, the Bible said, these are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And
And Moses called Oshia, the son of Nun, Jehoshua. They had not gone out to spy the land. But first, there was a change of name. Oshia means salvation. That was the name of Joshua before. Salvation. Salvation means I'm able to do things by myself. This is a secular world. One of my cousins way back when we, his English wasn't exactly good. So when we sit down and we're with friends and we're talking, we'll be saying, uh, so when it comes to English and then when he wants to speak, we cover up for him. We say, oh, well, what Sam is trying to say is this and that and that. So one of these days he was, <laughs> he was already full, so he was talking. So he said, no, 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 don't talk for me. He said, let I talk. <laughs> Let I talk. I can talk by myself. <laughs> so what we were trying to cover, it eventually came out. So, Oshia is salvation. I can do stuff by myself. I have education. I'm ever trained. I have beauty. People are looking for me. With my beauty, I can make moves. With everything that I want to do, with the things that God has put in me now, with my talents, I don't need anybody. I can do things. That is Oshia. That is salvation. But then, before they went out to spy, Moses, the leader, Change the name of Hosea to Jehoshua, meaning God is my salvation. I have moved from my other training. Yes, it still exists, but with God, I can conquer. God is my salvation. It is by God henceforth that I will make things to happen. It is by God that I will approach that issue of housing. It is by God that we approach that issue of marriage. It is by God that I will take on anything that comes my way. I am not able to do it by myself, despite all the things that I have. Henceforth, I am Jehoshua. It is God that is going to be my salvation. I still have my brain and my qualities. I still have everything. But God is going to be the one that will make things stick for me. I pray for you in year 2022. God will be your salvation. God will be your salvation. God will be your salvation. The almighty God will be your power. The almighty God will be your wisdom. The almighty God will be your strength. The almighty God will be your sustainer. The almighty God will be your intellect. In the name of Jesus. As you, have, as you, as you go into year 2022, you need to put some God into your name. Dr. Woody, you, you can be a L. Woody. <laughs> Add something to it. Add God to your name. Let God be the one powering you. It will happen to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why it was not a surprise. When the 12 spies went, they came back. They brought evil report. It was only this guy, Jehoshua, who said, yes, indeed, the place is nice. We saw giants there. They said, oh, we were like grasshoppers in our own eyes. Yeah, that is true. But the guy said that, with God, we are able to conquer them. You know the story. He said, with God, God being his salvation, we are able to conquer that land. The others didn't agree. They said no. There were 
12 spies, 10 of them said, no, we are not able to do it, so let's go back to where we are coming from. Please, when they said they were going back, how did they think they were going to be able to cross the Red Sea back? God that has brought you this far, you have to continue to believe in him. That there is no other way. You can't even go back anymore. So they said, let them go back. But Joshua and Caleb said, no, we can't go back. Let's go. God is our salvation. We are able to conquer the land. Well, after that report, anyway, you know, there were 12 of them. And they went to spy that land for 40 days. And they came back. They even came with fruits. They came with everything. All through the time that they were in that land, spying. See, 12 people, 40 days. Nobody noticed that they were spies. Nobody knew. They were in the city, 12 of them, moving around. And obviously, they were Jewish. People knew that they were Jewish. But nobody noticed that they came to spy the land. When Joshua took over power, and you see, the, the Joshua style of power is one that we should go and study. Just go and check. Joshua does he, you know the look face. I'm sure, unlike Moses, if it was Joshua that sent out 12 spies and they came without rubbish report, we we'll lock them in the room and say, execute them. Say, how can I send you, you people of faith, and then you come back and give me this? And but Moses will bow down to the ground and meekly he will be interceding for them. But that's a different thing. Anyway, when Joshua took power, 12 people had gone, they had come with negative results, 10 of them. He said, it is not by numbers. When he was going to send out his five, he only two people. He said, I don't need the numbers. I only need people of faith. Only two people. He sent two people to that promised land. When they got there, in just one night, the whole world knew that some spies had come. Twelve people went. They spent 40 days. Nobody noticed them. If you are not carrying faith, if you are not carrying sonship with you, if you are not carrying the spirit of God with you, the enemy will not care. They will not notice. But these two people came with faith. Just in one day, they knew, not just that they knew, they went to report to the king. The king got to know that two spies are here to spy the land. So you might have challenges, but when God had already said that I will give you the land, when you get there, when you see challenge, that is what you should use to know that, yes, God is in this, and they will make it. The two spies came, they went in there, just one day, the owner of that uh, hotel, Rahab, went to meet them. Say, they are looking for you people. They are going to kill you. But me, I will save you. No problem. Just stay here. See, God has already put your fear in our hearts. We know that you will take this land when you come. Who preached to Rahab? Please tell me. Who preached? Who told her? That God already has given them the land. The spirit of God is working in the life of the firstborn. When they see you, they know that you are going to conquer. She took the treasonable risk of keeping them because she knew that they would be saved at the end of the day. They were supposed to probably supposed to go for 40 days. The spies spent only one night there. Yes, we have seen the place. Indeed, indeed, what they were doing was that. We have stepped our foot in the place. Wherever your foot shall step upon, I will give it to you. So they spent only one day there. Their job was done. They came back. By the time they came back, when others would have carried um, um, chariots and what have you, all they carried was bigu. Let's go and sing. And then they got the land. That is how you will get the land in year 2022. <laughs> all you need to do is to be spiritual. Carry your spirituality with you. Carry your faith with you. 
If you do that, I can tell you, it guarantees you victory. You will be victorious in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not a question of uh, people can come, there can be many people, there can be 10 spies, but only two. They went in there. They got what they wanted. They stepped their feet on the land. By the time they came back, victory was guaranteed. That is the element of the spiritual in that. When you are a child of God, as you go into this year, don't depend on the secular. There is a spiritual aspect of things. Normally, 12 spies would have been more than two. But the two that went there got the job done. You will get the job done in year 2022. Let us rise up to our feet. Let us begin to say, thank you, Lord Jesus. And I want to begin to pray. In this year 2022, I carry your presence with me. I carry your spirit with me. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Year 2022, I'm coming with your presence in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is not in the numbers, but in the faith. I have faith in you, Lord God Almighty. Somebody praying. I want you to pray. Just say to God, I have faith in you, Lord God Almighty. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I will make it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm praying for you. Everything that you need to succeed in year 2022, the Lord God Almighty is giving it to you. I command them to locate you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I command upon you spiritual energy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive spiritual energy. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive the grace to pray. Receive the grace to fast. Receive the grace to walk. Receive the grace to pray. Receive the grace to fellowship. Receive the grace to, to dwell in the word. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Receive the grace to worship God. Receive the grace to praise. Receive the grace to dwell in the word of God. Receive the grace to do good works. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every spiritual weapon that you need. I put it upon you today in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As you go, I pray for you. You begin to trouble your troublers. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that I have given you power to trample upon snakes and serpents. That is an aggressive confrontational action. Begin to trample upon your enemies. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. When they say attack is the best form of defense, I order you to go in the attack. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are conquering year 2022. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Whatever challenges that you face right now, they are actually stepping stones to your victory. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The number of your challenges right now shall be the minimum number of your victories. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You will do well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I decree upon you the unction to function. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you can say amen. I say I decree upon you the unction to function. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go into year 2022 and do valiantly. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go and conquer the land. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Go and do as occasion serves you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Spirit will enter into you and give you guidance on what to do. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come back with good news. Come back with good testimonies. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We shall be well with you in the morning, in the noontime, in the evening. So shall it be. For we have prayed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Just lift up your hands and say thank you, Lord Jesus Christ.